In this video, we're going to ruin some mold making materials so you don't have to. In this round, we're going to focus on how silicone rubber can become ruined. And in another video, we're going to focus on how urethane casting resins can become ruined. Silicone rubber has multiple advantages over urethanes and other materials. Its flexibility, durability, and self-releasing properties make it an especially popular material for making molds. The biggest issue with silicone rubber revolves around cure inhibition. There are some substances that interact with some silicone rubbers as they cure and actually prevent the silicone from completely setting up, leaving them wet or sticky. Moreover, some silicone rubbers will inhibit the cure of some liquid urethanes. So in order to avoid turning your project into a sticky mess, we've put together this guide to help you avoid over 99% of the causes of cure inhibition. The first thing you need to know is which of the two chemistries of silicone rubber you are working with, addition cure rubbers, which are catalyzed with platinum, or condensation cure rubbers, which are catalyzed with tin. Now, there's only one cure inhibition concern with condensation cure silicone, but it's a really big one, and that is they don't play nice with certain casting urethanes. To demonstrate, we've made a mold out of V1065, our most popular condensation cure silicone, and in it we've poured our Freeman 1040 flexible urethane. The next day, we get a clean release, but the surface of our part is sticky and the surface of our mold is still wet. Even the following day, the part still hasn't cured, and in fact will never fully cure, meaning that not only do we have an unusable casting, but we've also ruined our mold. So while many urethanes will work fine with condensation rubbers, these exceptions do exist, and without getting into which raw materials may or may not be the root cause of this phenomenon, there's no way to know ahead of time whether the urethane that you'll be using is going to be incompatible. Thus, you risk losing hours of time and hundreds of dollars if you are wrong. So we normally recommend condensation cure silicone rubber only when working with polyester casting resins. Addition cure silicone rubbers, on the other hand, play nice with every casting urethane we've ever worked with, which is why they are demonstrated almost exclusively in our instructional videos. They do, however, experience a greater cure inhibition when poured against materials like acrylic, vinyl, wood sap, urethane foam, and sulfur. Sulfur is a common ingredient in modeling clays, so we're using it to demonstrate cure inhibition by constructing a circular dam of non-sulfuric clay on top of a block of sulfuric clay. After pouring our V340 addition cure silicone in this mold, we allow it to cure overnight. Upon demolding, notice how most of the rubber has cured, including that which came in contact with the non-sulfuric clay. The bottom, however, is still wet. Even after sitting an additional day, it still fails to cure. So if you're planning to pour addition cure silicone rubber against wood or vinyl, it is best to seal that material ahead of time. And as for modeling clay, we simply recommend avoiding the clays that contain sulfur. That leaves us with the curious issue of urethane foam. Modeling and styling boards made from urethane foam have become more popular in recent years as they are lighter and less expensive than typical urethane modeling boards, yet they provide a good enough surface finish and edge definition for many projects. However, we were surprised as anyone to find out that they can inhibit the curing of addition cure silicone rubber. Initially, we thought we could treat this issue like we do wood, where a simple application of a sealer would fix the problem. So we ran this experiment. We cut two small cavities in two pieces of Renshape 5030 urethane foam board. On each board, we sealed one cavity with our wood and plaster sealer and left the other cavity unsealed. As you can see, it doesn't really matter whether we seal the cavities or not. Our V340 addition cure silicone failed to cure and left a mess. However, our V1065 condensation cure silicone rubber performed well regardless of application of the sealer. So if you're planning to machine your model out of urethane foam, it is best to avoid addition cure silicones or switch to a non-foam urethane modeling board like Renshape 450, which plays nicely with all silicone rubber. One additional note on silicone rubber is that you don't want to switch from one chemistry to the other using the same mold box. So if you create a mold with V1065 and then you later want to make the same mold with V340, you'll need to start over. Finally, we should note that silicone isn't the only material available for making flexible molds. Urethane rubber does have some advantages. It is generally less expensive, 
and it is much more abrasion resistant, making it the material of choice for many concrete, ceramic, and architectural applications. However, since it is a urethane, it requires the proper application of sealers and release agents, which we detail in our other videos. So there you have it. When it comes to cure inhibition, you now know more than 99% of mold makers out there. By not only understanding our choices, but also the limitations of each material, we are far less likely to run into trouble once we start using the various materials. As always, if you have any technical questions or concerns, our technical line is open eight to five Monday through Friday. And you can also submit your questions via our website at freemansupply.com. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are released. This particular video was created to complement our initial series of instructional videos. Originally released on DVD, all of our videos are now available in our extensive online video library, which you can view in sequence and for free at freemanvideos.com. And again, thanks for watching.